Hello, Mary O'Malley with the 12th video of my new book, What's in the Way is the Way. And today we are exploring the 10th chapter, The Song of the Heart. So take a moment and close your eyes and just listen to all the sounds around you, the sounds that are far away and close and in your body. Just take a few moments. And listen. And now open your eyes. In those few moments, you pulled your attention out of the storyteller. And you brought it right here into the moment that life appears out of mystery. The only moment that matters in your whole life. What pulls you back into the storyteller are all the spells and we have been exploring how to dispel the spells so you can be here for life. Will this happen overnight? No, we've only spent most of us decades really believing the spells, being run by the spells inside of us. And you will still, even as you are awakening, remember and forget and open and close. But you'll more and more discover how not to hold on to the openings and not tighten down around the closings. Because you know you are the awareness, the space in which all these opening and closings are happening in. And you won't tighten down around, you won't hold on. And every moment that you are aware, every moment that you relate to what you are experiencing rather than from it, is like a drop of water in a bucket. And you, uh, um, you know, take a look after a couple of weeks and there's not even enough drops to cover the bottom of the bucket. You say, oh, this is not working. But there's something inside of you that knows that it is true that every moment of consciousness counts. And then maybe, you know, a year later it's half full, you know, and you say, well, maybe something's happening here. And then one day your foot is wet and you look down and the bucket is overflowing. That your ability to not be hooked by the spells becomes strong enough that more and more you can be here for life. And so in meditation a few years ago, what came was what I call the four lets. And the four lets will allow you to see how you can bring consciousness to whatever you are experiencing. And the four lets are let life, let it be, let it go, and let go. So let life is turning it over to life. This is what we explored in chapter four. That life is waiting for the opening of a question. And you can use this when you are just so confused, you don't have a clue about where you are, or you're resistant to looking at where you are, of doing the U-turn, or that you even have tried the, uh, the skills and uh, nothing is happening. That's the time to turn it over to life so that your wisdom self can get a word in edgewise. And that brings you to let it be. This is where you become more and more curious and you're willing more and more to do the U-turn in any situation that brings up the spells inside of you. And you realize that there's nothing inside of you to be ashamed of or afraid of. They're just spells that you took on before you were six. And you realize that the spells are just like you, that uh, they want to be welcomed. They want the kindness of your own accepting attention and when you learn how to not fight what you are experiencing that's what let it be is about and instead give it your attention more and more you will unhook from your spells so this brings us to let it go <laughs> and let it go is one of the greatest joys in awakening that's what a spell is there and you're not enamored by what uh, the spell is saying. And this is when you can just unhook from it and let it pass through 
And that's what your life becomes about, letting the reactions inside of you pass through you because you recognize there's nothing inside of you that's worth closing down around. And that brings you to the fourth let, which is let go. You know, there is a natural unfolding of life. In fact, this moment is a part of it that you're listening to this video. This is a never-to-be-repeated moment in the vastness of all time. And this moment is your home. And the more you allow yourself to turn it over to life, to not fight what you're experiencing so you can see your spells, so they can begin to move through you, you discover the joy of coming back to life. You discover that the safest thing you will ever do is be open to life. And this is where the mind drops into the heart. The heart is that which can embrace it all. The heart is the love affair that you have longed for your whole life. The heart understands that everything thrives in the presence of love. Your cells thrive in the presence of an awake heart. Uh, the grocery store clerk, your, your loved ones, and even the trees and the grass, they all thrive in the presence of an awakened heart. And the more you live from your heart, the more you recognize there's only one of us here. How I described it in the book is imagine this tree with billions of leaves, you know, and every single leaf is a piece of life. It's a stone, it's a, it's a leaf, it's a person, it's your heart, it's, it's the clouds in the sky. And you can see that they all are attached to branches that are attached to the same trunk that are embedded in the earth with the same roots that draw on the same essence of life. And this is the joy of awakening when you recognize that everything you see and experience is animated by this presence, the oneness at the heart of life. So be willing to be curious about what's going on inside of you. Look to unhook so your mind can drop into your heart and you can be fully connected with life.